Welcome to the Head Cracks Hip Hop Spot. Yay. A man who a lot of people have probably seen on the internet, but he's in the studio with us right now. The one, the only, Lil Dicky. Yeah. I'm, I'm a real human being. Look. Yes. Oh, whoa. He yes. exists. Yes. Flesh. Yes. Can we press the flesh? Yeah. We, uh, did it feel good? Uh, it felt. It felt warm. It My felt hands are yeah. Moisturized. They won't be yeah. Yeah, I wet. have really soft hands. I, I do too, bro. Yeah. It was good. That cool. shows that you know you you work with your mind. Exactly. Exactly. Moisturize. Yeah. We are so proud to have you in the studio because not only for one, like to be able to see something turn into an, it, like, go from like an idea or mm, a concept yeah. to turn into this big viral thing that people are really rocking with is amazing, man. For yeah. those that don't know your story, if you can like summarize it, like, you know, the in Superman re reboot style. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it back. Where did it all come from? I was there when the Kickstarter campaign went Right. Mm. You know, I guess my whole life I've always dreamed of being an entertainer. And like probably like more realistically as like a comedian because I think that was kind of always the feedback I was getting was like you're a funny person, and uh, I thought about you know after college I knew I was going to make some sort of attempt at being an entertainer and I thought about like the best ways in and I could rap like a little bit back then and I thought this is like an interesting way in because there's not a lot of competition in terms of like the comedy rap space. Not really thinking that I had like a lot of talent. I mean I had talent I suppose, but I didn't know that it was like this level of rap, and I just did it. And I kept getting better and better. And then, you know, I, I started taking myself pretty seriously as a rapper. And then, but I still, you know, have like this comedic side to me that mm. I haven't left out. And, you know, made an album, did a Kickstarter, raised a lot of money. Cause like initially you only wanted like seventy thousand dollars or something, and then you ended up topping off like what, like one hundred thirteen? Yeah, one hundred thirteen. Yeah. Now what what makes you think that, that your Kickstarter campaign was more successful than others? Because you know so many people come out there. Yeah, I need money for this. I'm trying yeah. to do this. Well, you know, I think I played it smart in the sense that like I really built a fan base without charging anything to the point where like b right before I was doing the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. everybody was like hitting me up like, how can I contribute to this? So I just knew like there was like a sense from the fans that like they were ready to because I hadn't asked them for any money and they were so diehard at right. that point. So, you know, the average Kickstarter, like I did all this research, like the average backer will donate like $20 to a Kickstarter campaign. And mine, it was each person on average was 40. So I doubled Double, the average. Yeah. yeah. I just think people like really like my whole thing in general feels like a very like ground up thing, like where it's mm -hmm. like if he can do it, I can do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think people really like felt the need to be a part of it more than ever that's kind of like the spirit of kickstarter but it's also kind of the spirit of me as a rapper so it's like a perfect combination and it just seems like like the brutal honesty yeah overall that is over your whole situation i yeah. think it really pulls people in yeah like, i know no other way i like i don't like faking or lying i just like keeping it real what kind of like things have you come against being so real because you know a lot of stuff is fantasy that we see a majority of stuff that we mm -hmm. see is fantasy for you being real and putting yourself out there you know what i'm saying and, and wilding out how what kind of things have you come up against in, in your little journey? Well, you know, I think for the most part, it's like very appreciated. Where? Like I've, I've dealt with less negativity than I even thought I would coming into it. I think the one time, if I do run into anything, it's like people aren't used to some like comedy being in rap form. Mm -hmm. So they might like when you hear a guy rapping and he's being funny, you might not think I have to take him seriously as a rapper. Or you might get more offended because it's like you're not used to it, like uh, being offended in, in the context. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Whereas if it was like a, a South Park episode, you wouldn't even care cause, because like, you're it's ready a South for Park. It. Yeah. Right. So that's but but I, but I think people like really do get it, and mm -hmm. it's like that's totally reassuring for me. And it seems like it's like a high wire act with you because yeah, it is funny, but like you said, it's not parody. Mm -hmm. Like you're talking about just like yeah. regular you. like right. Know. That's another thing. Like I'd hate like you know if anyone thought I was like mocking hip hop or like trying right. to be like a parody rapper because I'm not. It's just I happen to be like if you hung out with me all day like I just make too many jokes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So like I mean beyond the music like it just seems like the next logical step would be movie a TV star show yeah. TV show movie star yeah. like I'm surprised FX isn't like trying to develop something for you right now because it just seems like Adult yeah. Swim would work really well yeah, yeah. you have a little like freedom over there like I want HBO thing. HBO well, yeah you really would but I know that it's like you know they don't make anything HBO is so tough to get shows on air yeah. they'll buy like 30 shows and put 3 of them on air Really, yeah. but I feel like I have like I'm living like the light like look, I'm wearing this Magic City hoodie like last night I'm in Magic City right you know <laughs> I'm like talking to the strippers like all about like I was so hungry and I said like I hate to pester but like are the wings on Almost, almost here. Instead of the ass, you're looking at the wings. Exactly. Yeah. And I just think my life is like so interesting because it's just like I'm always kind of like a fish out of water, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's like Curb Your Enthusiasm just set in the rap world. Word. Yeah, Larry David. Yeah, exactly. But like a young version of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I just think it's like a, I'm in a unique position where my life is just inherently so entertaining. Hopefully you're documenting everything. Oh, I write visually. down everything. I yeah. mean, even visually too, because your story, because that way, you know, someone don't pick it up, you can sell it. Obviously, because yeah. you've done it. 
yeah, this, yeah. this far, you might as well take control of it. I take tons of notes and mental notes, and yeah, I think. You know what I'm I hope that the, in five years, I hope that you see me just as much as Dave Bird as you do Lil Dicky. Word. Yeah. Like and you from Philly, yeah. right? Live in L.A. now. Mm-hmm. Like I would imagine, because of like just the way that this whole music thing is rocking for you right now. You've probably seen some very interesting things in the last eighteen months. Like, what is yeah. like, what is like the wildest situation you found yourself in since Little Dicky started really popping off? Almost like a fever dream. Well, like there was like a three day stretch, like that was like in the beginning of my tour. That was like probably the most eventful three day stretch of my life. <laughs> day one, I got invited to the Dodgers game by like Andre Ethier, a Dodger. So I'm on the field like during like warm ups, like stretching with the team, like meeting at, like literally everybody like coming up to me and talking to me. You know, I'm a huge Chase Utley fan. He played on the Phillies. He's in the Dodgers now. Like, he won a World Series when I was a kid. So, like, I talked to him. He's like my childhood hero. Wow. Uh, so, there was that. The next day, uh, I have a show in LA. Sasha Baron Cohen, Borat comes mm-hmm. and, like, was so into it that he invites me to his house the next day. And I'm just, like, at Sasha Baron Cohen's <laughs> house drinking red wine. Like, what do y'all talk about? Yeah. You just, like, life and comedy and, like, he told me, like, that the meeting reminded him of when he was 27 and he moved to LA off of Ali G. And Jim Carrey invited him over to his house. And I was like, man, like, what a comparison. Like, thank you so much. It was just great. His, like, wife, you know, his wife, is, have you seen Wedding Crashers? Yeah. yeah. You know, she's like the yeah, redhead. That's right. that's right. She's British, too. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. Australian. Oh, she's yeah, Australian. Yeah. I thought she was British. So she's just walking around, like, holding babies. You know what I mean? It's like, it was like surreal. <laughs> and then the day Wait, after they're that. they're babies or are they just random babies? They're, babies. Oh, they're, okay. they're like beautiful, Wait. like little kids are so cute. And like, he's it's not like a trafficking s- house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was That'd be so, so ill. He just pops up with random Asian babies. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it was, I think it was theirs. And Word. then the next day, uh, I did a festival. And you, like, have you ever seen Waka Flocka Flame do his like EDM set? Yo, he's a yeah. beast. Yeah. The yeah. biggest beast. Right like, it's crazy biggest. that he made that switch. And it was the, like the the absolute right move. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like they love him. Yeah. So I was just I did a I did a set the same day he did earlier. But I was watching his set side stage, and like you know all these kids are jumping. It's like really crazy. But like I was just texting. All of a sudden I feel these like two hands, huge hands, and I look up and it's him. Mm-hmm. And he pulls me out and puts me right in the middle of the stage, like as the beat is like dum da dum da dum, like escalating. You know what I mean? And like I had no choice but to like I don't even remember what happened really. But like I just like blacked out and like turned up for like and then the beat dropped and like I jumped and you know I was like that was that yeah like it was like my only because I'll never lead like an EDM concert. But, right. Like, he, he for like four minutes. I did. That's dope. Yeah. So, like, those three days were, like, just, like, it was, like, just such different. The fact that I could be, like, passively texting and, like, really not thinking about much to all of a sudden be, like, in the middle of, like, 10,000 people jumping is, like, really jarring. Did you break into your patented uh, Little Dicky I'm sure I did, yeah. Like, I, like, I I genuinely think I blacked out. Like, like, I don't remember. It's crazy when you have those moments where you don't know what the hell's going on. Dude, it was intense. I was at Comic-Con, and um, I had some lemonade, (laughs) special lemonade that you get when you're in California, unfortunately. And you ever watched that show, Mr. Robot? No. It, the, the actor from it, uh, Remy, uh, Remy, I can't remember his name. Okay. Way too early. Mr. Robot's dope. Anyway, I, I think I grabbed him by his shoulder and looked him in his eyes. <laughs> you know, but like, it was just a blackout moment because right. I was just such a fan of that show and he's such yeah. a dope actor. You're just like, oh man. Like, I, I, I thought about the next day, like, what the fuck did I say to him? <laughs> I know. <laughs> But and man, whenever like, I see like and I'm like that's why I don't get like remotely upset when anybody comes up to me and like treats me as a celebrity and like wants a picture because when I'm around celebrities I get like so like excited. Yeah. Like, so you know super that excited. Who's blowing your mind like yeah. the most? Like far as like, oh man, I'm chilling with. Man. I mean the the level of chill in terms of Sasha Baron Cohen, like, because I'm literally at the guy's house drinking wine with him and like he's like such a big deal to me. In his personal space. Yeah, exactly. Who I mean I I feel like who am I I always forget, like who am I? Who's crazy? I don't know. There's a lot. That's a good thing. That's a good problem to have. I know. It's a damn good problem. Yeah, because like I don't even think like you're so used to seeing Sasha Baron Cohen as a character. Mm-hmm. You don't even know what I he's like. Yeah. No, I didn't know what he was like. He's a British guy, like a totally nice. Like yeah, you only see him as a character. No one really knows what he's actually like, and he's great. He's charming. Word. Like so, in the realm of hip hop, who's yeah. little Dicky's rap friends? Like who do you hang out? Mm. You know, I don't have nearly enough. I'll be honest. You got to change that, man. I know. It'll change. It'll yeah. Change. Like, you know, I think Rich Homie is one of my better rap friends. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We're Word like, on the street, you guys are going in the studio for like a week yeah, coming up soon. Yeah, we're like, we're working on some stuff. Like an EP together? Well, I don't want to talk too much about it. Okay. Word. I really don't, but yeah. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. That's going to be very interesting because your level, of, your skill level is pretty high. 
Thank you. As far as you know, bars and lyrics and, and his delivery, his, 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 yeah. he's amazing to me. It's like, be the thing is, when you break down what it is that Rich Homie Kwan actually does, there's actually a level of brilliance oh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, oh, for sure. Like it, the he's way a genius. his tone is and the way he like kind of whips up the hooks mm -hmm. and impressive dance moves. Yeah, no, it's kind of scary at times. He's so nice though. Like if if you've been I, to me, he's like I couldn't imagine a nicer human being. Word. Same with T Pain. T Pain yeah, T -Pain's is one of my cool. favorite people yeah. in the music cool. biz. Yeah, like, just like a regular sweetheart. cat. Yeah. And he let you like uh, steal some shots from his video uh, yeah. in, in the Save That Money joint. Yeah. Which now has like somewhere upward of like I think like twelve million views. Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah, close to thirteen. More it's people seeing that than the movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no one's going to movies like and watching videos too. I'm proud that it's nine minutes and can still get that many views. Yeah. And, and that means man. people like sat there and watched the whole yeah. thing. And just the thing is just to see the process of you like going like from house to house. Yeah. Set up the shots and like I don't think I've ever seen like an endorsement, like an obvious endorsement right. for a product in a video. Yeah. Other than the fact you might see a bottle of Chirac, right, right. Chirac. <laughs> but then they don't make a joke about it; they just do it. You know, yeah. what I mean? it felt like the right move to like, acknowledge the, the absurdity product placement. Of it. Yeah. yeah, let them know. And now, and now, the beauty of this video is whenever you see like the absurd cheesy beats pill moment in my videos, you're not gonna like hate me for it. You're gonna be like, oh, he's getting paid. Like he deserves it. Yeah, you, you letting yeah. him know. Yeah. You almost respect it. Yeah, kind of like during yeah, the show exactly. last night. Like during the show, yeah. there's a oh, moment. The there's a, yeah, there's a yeah. smoke, bro. I was respecting the yeah. hell out of that. I, I like, think it's a ridiculous social achievement to like great. be paid to sit for five minutes and smoke weed and get paid and talked about for it. that moment. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so when it's all said and done, right? Yeah. The, the Say That Money video. Yeah. You got so many things for free. Yeah. Dope car shots. Mansion shots. How much did the whole thing cost you when it was all said and done? Well, I made money. It didn't cost me anything. Like when you, I wanted to make sure that I at least broke even, so I got just enough product placement to break even. Like I made like about six hundred dollars. Word. Yeah. I think that's like the first time ever in rap history that someone's ever made money shooting a video. video. Yeah. Because Lord knows we'd be losing it. Yeah. Oh my God. We'd no, you know, I had minimal expenses in terms of like you know you gotta hire film guys you got to hire people to like like there's tons of footage because we had like shot it all documentary style and editing's a mo is yeah. a mother you know what I mean? yeah editing is crazy so but and like you even got to feed these guys like but like i trust me like we went to like fast food places yeah. like i kept it i gave everybody kept was, catering real low you know like we even returned the cameras like i took it fairly far like we bought the cameras and returned them oh yeah so, that's like the that's next damn level good i know we took it but i, I respect that yeah like, you know because like that's you, like you, we're doing the thing with the clothes People yeah. do that. You Might gotta play the camera. game because the game will definitely play. People you. do that all the time. People go to like even like IKEA, like they buy stuff, they set it up, and like they, like there's mm -hmm. couches like in, in, in like advertising. I worked in an ad agency. Right. We used to do that all the time. They had like send people to go into like the stores and buy couches and stuff and return them. Quote unquote dressing up. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you used to work for an ad agency before you was rapping. Yeah. So like, what's like the last day of work for you? Like, you know, like before you was like, you know what? <sighs> Fuck this. I'm done. Well, it's rap time. There were like two days. <laughs> there was like one day where. I was still working there, but I put my stuff online for the first time, and it blew up the first day. Like, the first day I ever put anything online, it got a million views, which is pretty crazy. Which joint was it? It's called Ex-Boyfriend. Okay. Word. Yeah. So, like, that day, although I didn't quit my job, mentally I totally quit. You were, you were, you were yeah. ready. You knew where it was going. I knew that I was right. going to quit. Uh, but then, like, I just really waited until my workload got too overwhelming, because, mm -hmm. like, it was actually during a slow period. So, like, I was like, you know what? I need this money right now. So, Tommy was on point. Yeah, the timing was perfect. And then the day I left, it was like... You know, everyone saw it coming. You know what I mean? Like it was, I probably was there like two months longer than I should have been. Word. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like the first on. time where like, you know, you got to like try to take time more because, yo, I got a show. And, uh... Well, <laughs> I was taking, I took, I used a lot of vacation days to come to LA and take meetings. Like, I, which they didn't know. But like, I, yeah, like I had to get a talent agency, managers, like I had to figure this thing out. Right. All while working. I'm sitting behind a cube. So it's like I scheduled all my vacation days and. I think I even used a few sick days, if I'm being honest about it now. No, yeah. shoot. I but really there are, was it yeah. like a, a, a nationwide like, furniture um, ad agency? It was a big ad agency, yeah. It's called Goodby Silverstein and Partners. They have like tons of clients. Like I worked on the NBA, Xfinity. Those were like the brands I worked on. Would you ever Doritos. hire your, your ex-employer? Yeah. You would? Yeah. To, like, in fact, do your, in do fact your project? the beautiful slides you saw at my show last night, <laughs> yeah. crea created by that ad agency. Oh, so they're like right. helping me out. Like. That's just, dope. Yeah, it's amazing. So there's no ill feeling like, yo, oh, man, no, the he sunned us. And the, the place is so liberal and like, I, it's hard to explain, but like this is exactly what they want out of their employees. They want them to you. like find themselves and like do their own thing creatively, which it doesn't, it's kind of counterintuitive because you lose your best talent that way. But they, they even have a thing every year where they give like someone $50,000 to pursue their dreams. Like a I actually That's applied dope. for Lil Dicky as this thing and I got turned, like they didn't do it. You showed them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was like, it. man, I gotta try this. This, this 
They're throwing me. Th- it's like, yeah, it's fifty grand. And then I thought, you know, I'll just do a Kickstarter. Yeah. So like, what do your parents like think? You know, like. Well, at first they were very anti. They were like, we do not want this stuff to go online because you know, and it is like edgy content, and like say no one cares that much. It does, I suppose, potentially make future employers kind of like it could weird them out. You know what I mean? Because the internet's fairly permanent, and like uh, these songs are like. I'm rapping about like other guys' dicks for verses. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but uh, as soon as it, the, the beautiful thing about it going viral the first day was like my mom called me the first day and she was like, "You're absolutely right. This was over my head. Like, congratulations. I'm so proud of you." And now they're super into it. Like now, like my dad, like is like research. Like the other day, he was like, "Did you know the Migos did this, this, and this?" That's dope. Yeah, he's like literally like researching rap to like be like very well informed. And they're like so into it. I'm proud. They're yeah. proud of you, man. As they should be. I know. Yeah, but like the 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 double edged sword is like I can't do anything without them knowing. Like I can't tweet without them knowing. Right. So it's like any move I make, they see. Like any like if I publicize any sex I'm having, like they're. How all... do you feel about the weed thing? Like about like do they they no, they like they like yo man you can you stoned all the time but you're successful so you know and they, I think they had no clue that I even smoked weed right. So there, I mean there was a kind of, like she, my mom was like. She goes, I didn't know that you smoked weed. And then I said to her, right, I've said this to her a bunch. I said, Mom, if there's ever like a, a thing that you think I'm probably not that interested in talking with you about, I'm most likely not interested in talking with you about it. So like just err on the side of caution. Right. And let's just like, <laughs> let's just operate the way we've always operated and just like not bring up No, but stuff. not knowing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So when you think of like, you know, like getting, you know, getting into the game, most people do this to get chicks. Mm-hmm. That's right. like the end game. Man. Like, yeah. <laughs> not, not actual numbers, but right. if you was to put a percentage, on how much your like your your chick game, game. has gone up well, since since this whole thing popped yeah. up. First of all, I could even throw I could throw numbers at you if you're interested. Like I keep track. I, of Holy yo, yeah. that's dope. You got stats. I got stats. I want, like baseball, and you're yeah. a baseball fan. Yeah, like I used to actually. You know how like you saw my concert last night? I used right. to make it more of like a business PowerPoint presentation where I'd have like a a bar graph that showed like my sexual activity and like the spikes. <laughs> like dope. since you know what I mean? Like I actually had graphs for these things. So like, what would you think the numbers? I mean, here's well, I've had sex with 23 women. Mm-hmm. Like period, period, yeah. Wow, I would think it would like because that's gonna but change. Oh, though. But hold on, but like you know, like a year and a half ago it was five. Okay, okay. so you that's know. like damn, like a and you're twenty seven. I'm twenty seven. Okay, and like, but the thing is, I I always had girlfriends. Like I was a girlfriend guy, so like I never really lived life as like a single guy. I mean, that's I did, how but I was, like, bro. Yeah, as an adult, so like now. And I would say only since save that money do I really feel like I'm now starting to get the girls that I might in fact deserve. Well, like we see, we see the we see how you did it on stage. That's slick. Yeah, you picking them out beforehand and getting them back there. Yeah. Dudes dapping each other up. Like yeah, yeah. you turned <laughs> down some excellent. Like I know I turned down a lot. You made out on stage. I did. That but, was great. That was the for you. chick from last night. I know I turned her. Yeah. Wait, so where does that go? Well, you know, she was obviously, like, really... Like, I get thrown by sexual aggression. You know what I mean? Like I dig it, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, she was super into it, and it's just, like, I don't... Like, and her when, rhythm was weird. I'd be scared by that. Yeah, and it's, it's just... Weird I, sex yeah, it just... I didn't... I'm, like, I'm like the girl-next-door kind of guy. You know what I mean? And uh, as great as that girl was, I don't know that on paper she seemed like the girl-next-door. What would you do, if, like, when, when, you're, when you were on, on top of her... Um, for people who hadn't seen, I'm trying to paint, paint yeah. a mit- mental picture. But like, while you're on top of her on stage, if she if she popped the boner, oh man! And you're like, yo, dude. So uh, that's never happened. But I have I have met a girl. <laughs> at a, I have met a girl in a meet and greet right. who was like a normal cool girl. And she mentioned to me, she said like, oh, like I I model. And like I was surprised because like she was like cute, but like not, not model Steve, not right? model cute. And she was like, yeah, like I've had some stuff like blow up in the area. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then like after the show, she emailed me. And she was like, this is, like, my modeling, like, just to show you. And then, like, I, I look at it, and, like, I scroll down. It's her naked. Mm-hmm. I scroll down. There's balls? There's just, no, a huge, like, there's a dick. Holy shit. And what is that? And now I don't know. Is that a guy or a girl? I Because st- I'm telling you, it was a girl. Like, it was not, like, a man. Right. It felt like a Real girl. Feminine. It felt like an absolute woman just with a penis. Hips and dick. Yeah, and I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know what it, what, she, I right. don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know if it was a guy who was seemed like a girl. Dude, if, she has, if it has a dick. Or it was a girl it, with a dick. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, I'm sorry, if you're born with a dick, you, it's a dude. Yeah, I don't think we know that. I don't know. I, 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 I mean, I, mentally, the brain's different. Yeah. But, but physically. A, I don't know if she had a vagina, too. Maybe she had, well, the double. maybe there was a vagina underneath the dick that I just didn't, I scrolled and I X'd out. It's kind of like the balls like, are like a little, little shelf. I don't know. Like somebody vagina? broke this down to me, and it, it, the, I think the best way to explain it: there are no such things as chicks with dicks. It's only dudes with tits. Right. right. Okay. That's what. That's that's kind of. Okay. So it was a guy to you. I'm telling you, that guy was. No, she had a dick. charming woman. 
<laughs> the climate of like you know like the world is so weird right now yeah. that you can't like really like shoo anybody away yeah. like I was doing this thing <laughs> for Dish Nation the TV show we do sometimes and um, and like there was like this really stout woman yeah <laughs> who I am, sh- I am sure this was a man a and, she, and she wanted a picture and like in my mind I'm thinking Fuck no, yeah, right. you know. Yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But you don't want to be that no, guy, no, you like. Can't be but that. Then I love everybody, exactly. And and I appreciate anybody who appreciates yeah. anything that I do. In totally, any percentage. you just totally. did not want the sperm on you. You didn't want to have that that air about you to where when it comes online, someone's like, "Oh, head crate." You know what Man. he like? Do you ever used to watch Heathcliff? No. This chick, oh, okay, Heathcliff used to have a cartoon, and it was this big gray cat named yeah, Mungo. A cat. This chick was built like Mungo. Well, oh my this God. dude was built like Mungo. <laughs> it was like horrible. But so like, was it a chick or a dude? It was definitely a dude. Because I even had to ask somebody. I was like, that was a dude, wasn't it? And he's like, yeah. Maybe she just looked at me. <laughs>